Bro, did you um you see Alvin Kamara, bro? Yeah, man, you know. That's how Vegas would do, you know. Man, he you in know, trouble, you know. bro. I mean, this I mean, we're gonna see what's gonna come out of it, but uh yeah, it ain't looking too good for him, man. It ain't looking too good all for right. him at all, bro. And it's like Yeah, they said he beat the hell out of somebody. Bad. Bad too. So um yeah. I don't know, man. Let's go ahead and get this started. New viewers. Welcome. Returning viewers. Welcome back to Baseline the Goal Line. I got my people with me. Rick, what's up, bro? How you doing, man? What's going on, man? How you been? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Um, I am Alan Colby's Coburn. And this is Baseline the Goal Line, the illest sports podcast in the land. How you doing, man? How was your weekend? Oh, man, it was cool. You know, I'm sitting here getting my house fixed, so. Are you? I'm dealing with that all weekend. Yeah, I got to get my balcony replaced, so. Okay. You know, I had contractors here all weekend, man, but it was smooth. How was yours? It was good, man. I bought a, a Peloton. Oh, okay. Bought a Peloton. I should get it delivered to me on Wednesday. So yeah, big bro be on his. He got one. He'd be on the heavy too. So. I'm looking sure forward like to it, man. I, um, so subscribe. during the pandemic, what I ended up doing was I bought a bicycle during the pandemic. And I'm not gonna say I'm a cycling enthusiast, but I started liking cycling when I uh, bought the bike. I was actually riding maybe 20 to 30 miles a day during the pandemic. Yeah, so yeah, I, I've been saying after the last two years, I was gonna buy me a bike, but I couldn't find one nowhere. Yeah, it was crazy at the like during the pandemic. I actually went on Craigslist and bought one. Yeah, that's what I should have done. I couldn't find it. stores had waiting lists on bikes. I'm, I'm sure, yeah, man. So I went on Craigslist, bought one, and I was on it, bro. Like like I said, like 20 miles a day, I was riding, man, for sure. 20 miles a day, and then um, so like I said, I you know I I got fond of the whole bike riding thing. So I wanted to see if there was anything out there for me to challenge myself. And I had a whole bunch of friends that had the Peloton. It was like, yo, get the Peloton. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's challenging. Not only do they have the studios, but they have like the scenic routes and shit that you can ride. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what they do, what's so ill about it is, you can have a guided scenic route, scenic route. So you got somebody that's riding it with you. And say for instance, they got like this one, there's one area where you're riding in Hawaii. I don't know which island it is in Hawaii, but you're riding in Hawaii. And then a dude that's on the tour with you, he gives you a, a synopsis of the volcanoes and shit and all type of stuff that you're riding through. You gotta let, you gotta let me know how you like it, man. I might yeah, I get it Wednesday, it. bro. I get it Wednesday. I got my, sh I got my uh, shoes. I went all out, bro. I got the spin shoes. Yeah, 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 man. Like that. <laughs> yeah, man. I went all out, man. I got everything, bro. Um, you about to be in there with the spandex? About to have the spandex? Nah, I, ain't gonna, I ain't doing all of that. I ain't doing all of that, bro. But I got the. You got the reflectors on you? Nah, man. I ain't doing all that shit. But I do got the uh, the, the shoes because you know the pedals. They it's the clip-in pedals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I, wanna, you know, I want to bust my shit. You know what I'm saying? So I got the I got the actual pedals and stuff, but. Um, let's go ahead and toast, bro. Um, y'all know what this is. Um, comment down below. Let us know what it is that you're sipping on. I'm doing it light again today. I got me a Mike's Hard Lemonade. What you got, bro? I got me a Long Island. Oh, shit. So, yeah, man. Rough, rough day, my guy? Yeah, nah, it was cool, you know. Just wanted to get something special. That's all. Okay, all right. So, you know, as always. Nothing to talk about today. Yeah, Rick gonna be fucked up. So as always, to life, <laughs> and wealth, and last but not least, sports talk. Salute. Salute. <laughs> now we can get it popping, bro. What you wanna, man? What you wanna start with? You wanna start with the NBA? Or you wanna start with uh, football? No, we gotta go with football, man. You gotta start with Brian, Brian Flores. All right, man. Let's go with Brian Flores. So if y'all haven't, um, if y'all haven't seen, right? Brian Flores filed a grievance against the NFL for discrimination. Um, and let me just give you a backstory, right? So I want to say it was back in 1990 or, or 2003, the NFL implemented what is called a Rooney rule. And that comes from the Rooney's who owns the Pittsburgh Steelers. They came up with a rule called a Rooney rule. And that is that every team has to interview a minority coach um, during their interview process. They have to interview a minority coach. So what ended up happening is Brian Flores, who was the uh, the head coach for the Miami Dolphins, he ended up getting fired 
And it was surprising. It was shocking to me. I don't know how you feel about it, Rick, but it was shocking that he ended up getting fired uh, because of I, I, I felt that they fought for him and they um, they actually uh, went to I think they played well. I think they overachieved this year. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I think so too. I right. Agree. So I, I, it was just it was it was shocking to me that he got fired, but only in the National Football League that stands for and it stands for not for long for black coaches. That's what the NFL stands for. <laughs> not for long when it comes to black coaches. Right. <laughs> but anyway, so he filed a grievance against the National Football League. And the reason why he filed that grievance is because before he went to, to interview for the New York Giants vacancy position, he ended up getting a text message from Bill Belichick. And then the text message said that uh, it was congratulating him. It was congratulating O'Brien for getting the head coaching position. But Bill didn't know Bill Belichick, that is. He didn't know that he was he was texting texting the wrong Brian. He was supposed texting to be, the wrong Brian. He was supposed to be text, texting uh, Brian. Um, what's the last name? Daybo. Daybo. Yeah. yeah. Brian Daybo, who actually ended up getting the job. And keep in mind, this was before Brian Flores actually went in for the interview. So word got out somehow that Brian Debo was getting the job before Brian Flores even had a chance to interview for the position. So at that point in time, he still went in for the interview and he was stating his frustration with the interview process because he already knew it was a ruse. He already knew that the Giants uh, ownership and, and general manager had already selected the person that they wanted for that particular position. So... Rick, let's do this real quick. I want to share um, a little clip because Brian Flores went on Get Up with Mike Greeny last week to share the reason as to why he uh, filed this grievance. What was the tipping point for you through your experiences that made you feel this was something you needed to do? Well, I mean, just, you know, I've been on you know several interviews over the years um, and Look, I mean, this is we didn't have to file a lawsuit for for the world to know that there's an an issue from a hiring and firing um, um, practices in the National Football League. That's Um, correct. A lot of people have pointed this out. So why did you feel you needed to do this? Because we need change. That was that was that was the number one reason. Real Um, quick, Rick, I want to just say something real quick in reference to this. We need change. So actually, if you think about this, Brian Flores isn't doing this just for himself. He, he jumped in front of the grenade, landed on the grenade for all of minority potential head coaches in the National Football League. He's doing it for everybody, not just for himself. Right? Absolutely. You yeah. know, I I think that a lot of people should should be proud of this man. You know, I think that he he's, he's setting himself up to where he'll probably never get another coaching job. Right. It's, it's not well, let me let me let me just say real quick before we get back to the interview that there are teams out there that are still quote unquote considering him for a head coach position. Well, it was, if I'm not mistaken, I think they were saying earlier today it was the New Orleans Saints were still considering him for a head coach position. Although the New Orleans Saints just announced that they're going to be hiring, I want to say it was their, um, the Saints have informed their DC Dennis Allen that they will be hiring him as the next head coach. But the New Orleans Saints, uh, they, they were they were talking about hiring him and right now, if you think about it, after the New Orleans Saints job, there's only one more vacancy. And the only other vacancy, and we'll get to the reason why there's only one more vacancy, because there was a black coach that got hired today. But the only mm-hmm. the only other vacancy right now is the Minnesota Vikings gig. But let's get back to this interview really quick, okay? All right. And I know there's, there's a sacrifice, there's risk to that, but... Um, at the end of the day, um, we need change. We need change. Um, I, I know many very capable um, black coaches, um, some of my staff who I know, um, if given an opportunity or when given an opportunity, are going to go and do a great job on their interview. Um, and I would just hate for that uh, to, be a, to be a waste. Uh, I, and I think, you know, we need to change the hearts and minds of of. The people making those decisions. That's why we're, that's why, you know, we filed the lawsuit. Who are those people? Now, if you just heard what he said, he said he wants to change the hearts and the mind of the people making those decisions. First of all, let's just throw this out there, man. The, the National Football League is over, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 72 to 75% African-American players in the National Football League. 
you have one head coach right now who is African American, and the funny thing is, the ironic part about it, it is from the team who actually invented the Rooney Rule in the Pittsburgh exactly. in the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, there's no way in hell Mike Tomlin is getting fired. First of all, he's never had a losing record with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it would just look crazy for the team who came up with the Rooney rule, the Rooneys, to let go of their African-American coach. You know how many, uh, how much backlash they asses would get if that ended up happening? Too much. Uh, well, I think too much. And, I, you know, and it sucks for Mike Tomlin because with all of his greatness and all the things he done accomplished, it, it, it kind of makes him a token uh, in a sense because, you know, it's like, well, you're the one, you're the black coach and you're on the team with the owners who have been rule. Maybe if they didn't invent the rule, you know, maybe you wouldn't be there either. And and I think that Mike Tomlin is an excellent coach, but it's I think that that's too ironic, and I think that it's sad that that's the the reality of the NFL. The the, the situation that we're in right now, and keep in mind once again, so this interview took place last week. Um, last week, I want to say it was on the February second or something that this interview took place. And just to piggyback off of what you said, man, I just I, I agree with you one hundred and fifty percent. It's almost like. It's almost like Mike Tomlin is a sympathy case. Yeah, we but, got one. But, you know. but, but, but I still want to reiterate that he still hasn't had a losing record. So there's no reason, there's no merit to fire him. There's no real reason to right. fire Mike Tomlin at this point in time. It's all, but it almost begs the, the question as if, if he did have a, have a losing record and if he had multiple losing seasons, would the Roonies get rid of him? Absolutely, and it sucks because with the NFL, yeah, the NFL being a copycat team, the way that it is, you would think that if you had a black head coach who'd been there for all of those years and never had a losing season, you would think that that would inspire more teams to hire a black coach or give some, you know, a former player or somebody give those guys those opportunities. But it, especially that with, hasn't been the case. No, and especially with the league being seventy five percent black people, you get what I'm saying. Like, who else? Who else can relate to these players? As a head coach, the way that another African American will be able to to relate to these players, and I'm not saying that the that the National Football or, League needs to hire all African Americans or even have 50 percent of African American coaches. That's not that's not what I'm saying. However, there ain't no way in hell that there only should be one black coach. No, the, you know, NFL is a boys' club. You know, you got all the owners, and the owners they they have the pick. They got to do the rules. They got to go by what they go by. But thank right. God Bill Belichick made the number one mistake that, that a lot of men that made their life. They take the wrong one. You know? True, because <laughs> right, no, that, that's a hundred percent true because I don't yeah. think we would have got the news that we just got stating uh that the Houston Texans have hired Lovey Smith. Now, Lovey Smith, first of all, Lovey Smith should have never been let go by the Chicago Bears to begin with. When he got let go, because he was at that point in time when he was with the Bears, I think they let him go, and he was ten and six the year that they let him go. He had a winning record the year that they let him go. So they just hired him, um, at, or they're they're planning on hire him. It says right here the Texans are expected to hire former Buccaneers and Bears head coach Lovey Smith as their own head coach. So I just tell Adam Schefter and Phil Yates now. This is a good thing. I'm going to leave this up here for a little bit just so people can see this. So this is a good thing, but it's almost like had this would this have happened if Brian Flores wouldn't have came out last week with that um with that grievance against the NFL. I mean, probably it's hard to speculate. Time. It's hard to speculate, right? Man, I but, think this one could have happened because look at the team. You know, they always you know whenever they do hire a black coach, they hire a black coach on the team that nobody expects to win. And so the, the Houston Texans, that's a dumpster of a job right now, especially with them not going on, not um, know what's going on with Deshaun Watson and the rest of it. So it's not a good job. It's not a job that you expected to win a bunch of games in. And ultimately, that means in the NFL that if you don't win games, then it's ultimately a job that you'll get fired from. Right. And so, and so, you know, a job like that one, I can see that one going to a minority candidate, whether or not the Brian Flores thing happens. But I don't think it's because they – I think it's because it would have been tough to feel that job with anybody who would have been an acceptable okay, candidate. Okay, you're taking a different route. Team. Okay, okay, you're taking yeah. a different route. So you, you're but not necessarily saying – yeah, excuse me. You're not necessarily saying that 
it was a sympathy hire for Lovey Smith. It was just that you don't know if there would have been too many candidates that would have taken the job to begin with. Right. Like who else was more qualified than him that wanted to coach the Texans? Well, they were also reaching out to Josh McCown, who never had a head coaching position to begin right. with, number one. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Let me just let me say this real quick. I think, you know, as you previously mentioned, the NFL is the good old boys league, right? So when you have, I think the biggest problem stems from the top. And when you don't have minorities or African-Americans that are in leadership positions, meaning uh, ownership, general managers and things like that, that is one of the biggest reasons as to why we don't have more black coaches because you think about it this way and this is not a color or a race thing typically when you have people that are in position of power to make changes or to to hire personnel a lot of times they're going to end up hiring their family members their friends things like that right and if you think about it i was reading an article that states that the nfl 14 percent of the coaching positions, general manager positions in the NFL stems from relationships, personal relationships, and actually people who are related to one another throughout the NFL. Mm -hmm. 14%. So when you have these people in power, and 14% to you guys may seem like it's a small number of, of people, but just think about it. I'm talking about 30 NFL teams. You have the defensive uh, defensive coordinator jobs. The def well, let me just say this: defensive coaches. So just think about all the positions on the defensive side of the ball. Offensive coaches, and then you have head coaches. So that's 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 probably right. twenty coaches. Right, right, mm -hmm. right there. And then you have general managers as well. So when I say fourteen percent in a vacuum and and in a in a in a pool full of coaches, that may sound like a little bit. But then when you actually just scale it back and think about that's that. That's like number, two per team. Yeah, that's a lot. Every team. That's a well, lot. Yeah. That's a whole lot. But I think that, once again, it stems from the top. When you have these people that are in these general manager and these head coaching positions, that can dictate who they're bringing in. And I don't think it's going to change unless we start having more. I shouldn't even say more. Unless we get minority owners. I think we have two minority owners right now, right? And I think one of them is... I think one of them one is of Hispanic. Yeah, for the um, for the Falcons. So that's Arthur Blank, the dude who owns Home Depot on the Falcons. But he just sold them. No, okay, so Arthur Blank, but he's not. Yeah. He's, he's he's a minority. He's not white. Okay. okay. Yeah, Arthur Blank is not white. Yeah. And we have. Um, well, well, he owns Home Depot. So right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. And then you got the guy, and I forget his name, but the owner for the uh, for the Panthers. Amir, is it Amir Khan? Ain't that his name? Go for the, right, the that's Jaguar, the boxer, bro. No, what's the Jackson Wire doing? His last name Khan, though. The dude who owns the Jaguar. Um, Shah Khan. Shah Khan. There you go. I knew it was Shad something Khan. Khan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about the what's? Oh no, because the uh, Panthers just sold last year. Yeah. But, but the owner prior to that was African American, but they just sold that. Or not African American. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Please let me rephrase that. He was a he was a minority, but he just sold. So so you got Shy Khan, and then you got Arthur Blank. That's it. And I just and I believe until we we get more people that's at the top who are minorities, it's going to be a, a a revolving door. It's going to be a revolving door. What do you feel about? Do you think that? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, how do you do it? Because in the NFL, right, the owners got to approve any ownership deal. They got to approve the sale. They got to do any of that. So yeah. usually, if you if you in a situation where you're talking about people who got a billion dollars, you can buy an NFL team. You're talking about a reduced pool of people as is. Right. And in the pool of people that you have, like you said, it's all it's all going to be based on relationships. It's not really about how much money you got. It's about the relationship. Yeah. And they're not giving those teams away. And, and, and it would be great if we could get a team, if they would allow the black owners to get teams and do all of those things. But I, I just feel like there's enough evidence, there's been enough data, and there's been enough reports, there's been enough evidence to show that this has been a problem in the NFL ever since the NFL really became a league. True. They had the problem with the black quarterbacks. They didn't want, they didn't want black people playing quarterback. They didn't want black people playing deep middle linebacker. Center. They didn't want, they didn't, yeah, none of that. They didn't want Arr, to do it. Yeah, it was, yeah that, because they felt like we yeah. weren't smart enough to play those positions. We, we weren't smart enough to do it. When they paid everybody for the for the CTE, when they was paying out for the concussions, they tried to they tried to argue like for the rate of, of the way the rate of pay per player. They tried to argue that the black pair black players 
wasn't as intelligent to begin with. So therefore they didn't lose as much mental capacity. So it's a whole bunch of stuff where with the NFL, the way they do things, they kind of set it up to where they say that, you know, black people are, are nothing but players. And it sucks because the players are the ones who have the knowledge. The players are the ones that have the intelligence. They're the ones that know the game. They're the ones that can add value to those situations. And you keep recycling these same guys. And like you said, family, friends, and all of this. And, you know, you got guys who got losing records who had seven jobs, mm -hmm. eight, eight jobs. And, you know, and, and how does that happen? If you as a black coach, there's no way. That you right, as soon as a black coach jobs. gets fired, they get right, they go right back to the end it's of the over. Yeah. It's, they yeah, go it's to over. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's fair. Ten years. You know, they're not rehired. Lovey Smith went to the Super Bowl. Right. He got fired. He hasn't been a head coach since. Right. Could you, you know, if he was if he was a white guy named Lovey Smith that summer, I I would imagine the summer that he became available, somebody would have tapped his hand. Especially when he came off a ten and six record. Right. He wouldn't. He wouldn't have ended up at the University of Illinois. No. Like, that wouldn't have, that, that that wouldn't have happened if no. he was. If he was, you know, if he wasn't, if he wasn't one of the black coaches trying to go through the fire. No, that's for it real. Wouldn't, that's, it, that's, it, it wouldn't happen to him that way. That's that's real talk. And then you know, so what do you what do you think? What do you think is going to be the outcome of this this lawsuit? Do you think this lawsuit um, has legs? Well, absolutely. I, I think the scariest part of the lawsuit for the NFL is the discovery part. I don't think the NFL is going to really want to have to talk about the behind the scenes stuff. Up. And so to them, it, it would be silly of them to not say that everything he's saying is ridiculous. It would be, right. you know. Right. Yeah, what he's you know, yeah, it don't make no sense, and what he's saying is a lie, and all of those things. But when it, but when you get down to it, and you have to start backing that up with receipts. Will you be able to do it? And let me ask you this and, too, man, because the, the real quick, and I'm sorry, I, I, I but I want to get to this because this is this is really important. The fact that you had Hugh Jackson, and then you had Brian Flores both come out to say that they were paid to tank, pretty much. They were pretty much paid to lose games. And think about it, right? You're already in a bad situation as a black head coach anyway because you know if you lose on a consistent basis, your ass is out of here, right? It's a, it's a wrap for you. Right, but you got these owners that are paying you. You know, Lovey Smith said that – or not Lovey Smith, I'm sorry. Hugh Jackson Hugh said Jackson. that you were getting $100,000 a game to lose. And he said at the point in time, he didn't when he, when he initially spoke to the owner about it, he wasn't aware what was going on, but at the end of the year, he received these big bonus checks, mm -hmm. and he was like, "What? The, what are they for?" You know, you know, get what I'm saying? But you're getting right. paid to lose these games when, in all actuality, when you lose these these damn games, your ass is gonna be out of here. So and they so paying you. you to, they paying you to get yeah. fired. Wait, what do you do? And so, because because it's not like as a black coach you have options. It's not like you're going to be one of the most sought after people out there, you know. So right. And so it's not like you're gonna be like, no, I'm not doing that. Fire me. I can get it. It's not gonna play out like. That. Right. And then if you take the money, they're gonna fire you. Brian Brian Flores was in Miami three years. He had two good seats. He had Ryan Fitzpatrick. He had two of you know. He have not. It's not been stable. He still had two good seats. No, and you and know, fired yeah, you got you got a coach, you got a head coach. I'm sorry, you got a quarterback who is mediocre at best. And when I'm I'm talking about in this situation, Ryan Fitzpatrick, his record is literally damn near 500. That's what his mm -hmm. record is is damn near 500. His touchdowns to interception ratio is damn near i like the touchdowns and the interceptions are damn near identical. So what can you do in that situation? You can't do shit. You set and I up, won two out of you three. And you up set up right, exactly. You set up to fail. And you paid me to lose the damn games that I lost. So yeah, it's, you, gonna, you know? it's gonna be super interesting, man. It's gonna be dead interesting to see what's coming out of this. And you know, I just hope that I really hope that we find out that, you know, first of all, I don't want it to be these minority coaches are getting sympathy hires. Yeah, you don't want that. No, you you want to be able to earn what you get. You get what I'm saying? Like, and I don't want it to be to the point where these people. And I'm afraid that's what's happening with the Texans. I get what you said earlier about them possibly not even having decent enough candidates or people who actually wanted the position. However, I also think that it has something to do with 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 yeah, them. Yeah, with the Brian Flores joint. Yeah, man, with the, they they under fire now. The, the whole NFL feels like they're under fire, and it's just. 
Fortunately enough for these owners that are in these positions, their positions weren't open at that time. That their their head coaching positions for their particular teams weren't open because if it was open, I guarantee you we would have more African American coaches getting hired. So that's play. So let me play the conspiracy theorists in that, right? So of the teams that were available at the time, right? How come the team that ended up ultimately hiring a black coach was the worst team in the bus? Well, right? I just, I, so, uh, yeah, let, me, let me ask you a question. Let me let me just throw something back at you. At that point in time, you have to think about it. When Brian Flores made those statements last week, there was there were only like I believe at that point in time it was only four head coaching positions left open. Of the nine, of of the nine that were originally open. Yep. Mm-hmm. So only four left open, and the Texans got that got filled, and then the Saints got filled, and then oh, also today. What's the kid's name that from the from the 49ers that got hired that said that he identifies as multiracial? I don't know. That wasn't I don't know who that was. I didn't see that one. Okay, don't go, go ahead. Just keep talking. But what were you saying? I'm a, I'll I'll pull it up. No, I want to see this one. No, go ahead. No, go ahead and figure, figure out what you're saying, because I'm pull yeah. it up. I, I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that, you know, if those owners got together, like you said, this has become a league wide problem. Hey guys, we haven't hired anybody. <clears throat> we need to show that, you know, we we are taking, you know, minority candidates serious or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm putting on my conspiracy theorist hat right now. So, I, you know, of course, I don't know that none of this happened. But Go ahead. If, I would say that if, if I was in a group of people, right, and my group was being attacked for being racist, mm-hmm. we would have conversations amongst the group. How can we prove to people that this is a lie? We know right. that we're not racist, but what can we do right now to kind of change this around? Right. And I would say one of the clear answers would be that's hire somebody. And then when you hire that person, it's like, okay, well, where do they go? These are the teams that are involved. These are the teams that have openings. Who would get them? Mm-hmm. And it's going to be the worst team with a bunch. True. You know, the, like the Vikings, the Vikings was bringing in John, John Harbaugh and all these other college coaches, right? They have options for that job. Okay. And, and so, and, and, and you said the other one, who was the other one that was left over, left open now? The last one? Vikings. The Vikings is the last one. Yo, so the yeah, they got options for that job. The same because, had options for that job. Because you here's know, the, like here's the guy that got hired as the uh, 49ers head. I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, the Dolphins head, head uh, next head coach. Yeah, Listen yeah. And, and check this out. Listen, look. Let me read this. New Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel, who identifies as multiracial, now joins Mike Tomlin Steelers and Ron Rivera Commanders and Robert Sala Jets as the only minority head coaches. Yeah, see that that's BS to me. And it's like, who is this guy? Yeah. Who is he? Because he was with he was the offensive coordinator. Let me let me just put the air quotes around the offensive coordinator for the yes. San Francisco 49ers. But if you know, he's not calling plays at the 49ers because Shanahan calls the plays. Well, that's talk about merit, right? If you talk about merit and qualifications, Brian Flores was a head coach for the last three years. Right. And he had two winning seasons in the last three years. Right. And, and so you mean to tell me that this kid is more qualified than Brian Flores to be a head coach? What about um um what about uh what's his face from uh from Kansas City? The offensive coordinator from Kansas City. Eric Bienemy. Eric, Eric Bienemy, right, exactly. And, I mean, like the one guy, the dude from the Packers just didn't he he just got the Vikings job. The guy from the Packers. Some coach, didn't he? Who got not the not the Vikings, the, the Broncos job? Didn't that one of the Packers? Oh, yeah, you talking about you talking about uh, the the quarterback coach, Aaron Rodgers' quarterback. Yeah, coach yeah. It's like I'm I'm in Wisconsin, and I've never heard the, I've never heard this man's name spoken ever. I, I well, I have but, because I'm a Packers fan. Yeah, I ain't never heard that right. man's name before. And now right. you get jobs over. You know, I just feel like you know if 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 guys like uh, Adam Gates can continue to get jobs. You know, John Gruden got a couple of jobs. He had a couple of years. The last coach that the Texans had, the college coach. It's been a lot. Of, it's been a lot of coaches. I feel like the NFL just kind of recycled, and and they and they never really perform well anywhere that they go. But, but what did we just talk about college. earlier, though? You know, you you think about it. You just go down the line of these the names of the people that you actually just talked about, right? The people that you just stated keeps getting these jobs. Hell, think about to the point where you had the Patriots OC. That just got a uh, got the head coaching job with the with the Raiders. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah. What's his name? Um, that actually I never heard of him either. You never heard of uh, what's his I know you talking about. No, you talking about McDaniel, Josh, uh, Josh McDaniel. Josh right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know so, him. So just yeah, think yeah, about it this him. way: like Josh McDaniels, he he had a head coaching opportunity with the Denver Broncos, turned it down. 
Right. He quit. Like, yeah. He quit. He quit. Turned it down. Well, he took the job. And then, like, after so many days within the job, he quit. Just like you said, right? But then now, he gets this position with the with the Las, or Las Vegas Raiders. Think about what I said prior to. What does this boil down to? It boils down to the relationship that you have with these people in the good old boys club. That's what it boils 100%. down to. 100%. That's what it boils because down to. Because Brian Flores would have never got another interview if he would have put that. No, man, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't have. And it's just, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to end up happening from this particular situation. Um, I don't know if... I'm interested to see the biggest thing. I just want to see where this lawsuit is going to go and what change is going to happen after this lawsuit. Now, I know Jay-Z has his hand in the NFL and he has uh, some stuff that's going on with the NFL. And that was the biggest reason why we got the, the Super Bowl halftime show that we have this year with Snoop. That's that's headlined by an entirely black cast outside of Eminem, but we accept him with us. Uh, <laughs> part of the crew. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he can come to the cookout. Yeah, he can come to the cookouts, and that's the reason why we have what we have right now with the halftime show is because of Jay Z. So it, it's just interesting. I want to see what's going to end up happening and coming from this as we move forward. But speaking of the Super Bowl, let's make our Super Bowl picks, bro. You go first. <laughs> okay. Now, let me start off by saying. I really want to start off by saying this. I have no horse in this race, right? Why are you sipping mm-hmm. on your Why are you sipping on your shit like that, though? I need I need a decision. I need it. I need it to help me make my decision on this. Right. So, <laughs> I feel like I want the Rams to win. I do want the Rams to win. Here's the reason why. We talked about this previously on a, on a couple episodes before. I want Odell Beckham to get a ring. I want Matthew Stafford to get a ring. And I want Aaron Donald to get a ring. So that's the reason why I'm rooting more for the Rams than I am for the Bengals. Now, if the Bengals won, I wouldn't be tight about it, right? But I feel like the Bengals... Now, another caveat that I need to put out there. I understand how hard it is to get back to Super Bowls. I understand that it's not easy. It's not a cakewalk. It's a reason why we haven't had a repeat Super Bowl champion since the Patriots did it over 10 years ago. We haven't had a repeat Super Bowl champion. And it's a reason for that. But I also feel that with everything that the Bengals have intact, what the Bengals have, what they have in their locker room and their core, I feel like they'll be able to get back to the Super Bowl again before the Rams will be able to get back to the Super Bowl. And that's the only reason why I'm picking the Rams to win it over the Bengals. And I believe that that pass rush is going to be able to get to Joe Bur- Burrow more than what the pass rush was able to, than the Kansas City Chiefs was able to generate their pass rush. Okay. I want the Bengals to win, dog. I want Joe Burrow to bring it home. Why? I like him. Why? I, I, love his con- I love his confidence. You know, I like that he's a young guy. I like that they're the underdog. I love Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. I like the fact I like the fact that the Bengals took the time and they suffered through all of those years and they built that team mm-hmm. as opposed to buying the team mm-hmm. the way that the Rams did. I think the Rams team was a little bit Hollywood and I think they built it that way for the market that they in. And I and I do respect the players that they got. I just I think I I would rather have Joe Burrow as my quarterback in this game. And I think that that's gonna carry him. I you know, I know that you you an NFC you're an NFC. Uh, you're an no, NFC no, 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 no. I don't have a. I don't have a. No, no, no. For real, no. In this in this situation, I don't have a. I don't have a, a conference horse in the race. I just, I just think. Like, I just think. So this. for me personally, I'm just rooting for probably the 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 most the, the 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 player that I like the most in this position in this particular game, and the player that I like the most in this particular game is Odell Beckham. I'm an Odell fan. I like Odell. Yeah, okay. So and that's. I think he. The, he the one person I want to see win a ring on Sunday. Okay. I just I, I just don't I still don't trust Matt Stafford. So let me ask you this, because you said something earlier before. You stated that you think the Rams put this team together because of the, the, the lure of Hollywood and stuff like that. But do you also believe that you have to maximize what you have with you traded for Von Miller? Well, let me just rephrase that because Von Miller came afterwards, right? But you already you 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 sniffed the Super Bowl 
with Jared Goff. You knew you couldn't get over the hump with Jared Goff for whatever whatever the reason is as an organization. So you trade for Matthew Stafford in the offseason, but you already had Jalen Ramsey. You already had uh, Aaron Donald. You don't want to waste those players' prime. And think about it. They're not going to be able to resign all of those players at one particular time. So you have to make it – you have to go for yeah. it now. You have to go for it now, which is the reason oh, why I, I believe – no, 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 no. I, I'm not saying that you are, but which is the reason why I believe they went for Von. They went after Von Miller and they got Odell because you have to go for it right now. Oh, absolutely. You know, you got an older team there. Matt Stafford right. is an older guy. You know, Odell ain't getting no younger. You got a lot of older pieces, so you got to push everything in the middle and you got to go for it right now. Right. So I'm not knocking the strategy. I actually applaud the fact that they had the guts to do it because your know, Packers should have did that. But anyway, you know, but anyway, you know, I, I'm blown. You know what? I'm blown. what? <laughs> I'm blown. Oh, what? So I Dude. applaud the fact that they had the guts to go out there and spend the money. And fight, the fight, fight, fight. <laughs> you know, let's dance, bro. Uh, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I wish that y'all would have had. Let's dance, bro. But it, it only cost y'all a quarterback in the end. So it's going to do it. <laughs> this is, bro. It only costs us a quarterback in the end, huh? It's only going to cost you a quarterback, man. It ain't going to cost you just a quarterback. Yeah, man. You know okay. All right. All right. You know what? Listen, man. On that note. Maybe Buddy Love can take care of you. I don't call him Jordan. He got to earn his name. I don't think. He Buddy listen, Love. Listen. Buddy Love, listen. listen. I don't think Rodgers is leaving. <laughs> oh, man. I don't so, think he's leaving. He's going for that. I hope you're right. I hope you're right, man, because there's going to be a lot of sad people around here. Oh, it is. It is. I, I can't think this house is for sale, me, brother. I, I still can't believe you took a shot at me. I got to do this I'm again. just saying. I'm just saying, bro. You know, I wish. I'm just saying, man. I wish that y'all would have had the courage to go out there and do with the, with the Rams. Well, you, you, but you, 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 you know. you're right, though. But see, so we, so. Odell chose between, and I'm not saying that this would have made a difference in the, in the yeah. divisional round, but the reason why Odell didn't come to the Packers is because Odell, the Packers could only offer Odell a certain amount of money. The Rams were able to mm -hmm. offer him more, and then they also stated that they would be willing to possibly re-sign him in the offseason. Right. So they, they had better, they had more cap flexibility. And they had more leverage. Mm -hmm. They had more yeah. leverage. Yeah, for sure. So, but whatever, bro. Let's, uh, so Before always make sure, man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Before we end the fight for sure, <laughs> let's in, let's get into the NBA and let's, let's discuss the the trade deadline coming up and also the the the, the NBA All-Star game, okay? All right.